Okay, in this video we will cover 1.2, finding limits graphically and numerically. So there are three ways to find the limit, and the graphical approach is to draw a graph, or if you're given a graph, and then to analyze what's in the image. The second way is the numerical approach, where you construct a table of values, and then you analyze where the values are going. And then the third approach is the analytical approach, which is where you use algebra or calculus to determine the limit. Um, so this is the way a limit statement looks. It says the limit as x, or I'm sorry, the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Sometimes interchangeably I might reverse that and say the limit as x approaches c of f of x. So these two parts can be interchanged. Okay. But you do have to say of the function and then as x approaches whatever that c value is. And so what is it that they're asking you for when they give you this kind of statement? What they want is they want the y value that you are approaching as this x value is approaching that x value. Okay, so as x is approaching this x value, what is the function's y value getting closer to? So this is the limit statement completed, okay? It's the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals L. That means that the y value is going to L as x goes to c, okay? Another way you can say y is f of x. So f of x is going to L as x goes to c. Now, the limit does not exist when you have one of three cases. One f of x approaches a different number from the left of c than it approaches from the right of c. So if you're taking the limit as you're getting closer and closer and closer to this x value on the number line, what's the y value doing? Well, if one value, one y value is going up here and the other y value is going down here, those are not the same y value, okay? And so then the limit does not exist in that kind of case. The second case is if f of x increases or decreases without bound. So in that case, you have your graph and your y values are going up to infinity or down to infinity. And if that happens, again, the limit does not exist. And then the third case, which doesn't happen often, but it does happen, is if your function oscillates between two values. So if for x equal to number it's positive 1 and then for x equal to the next number it's negative 1 and then x equal to the next number it's positive 1 so it just keeps toggling back and forth back and forth between 1 and negative 1 that's what's called the oscillation 